Welcome to the course. By the time you finish this course, you'll have built for yourself a finite element solver for 2D solid structures and a workflow capable of handling plane stress and plane strain structures. In this course, we're going to cover a lot of ground, right from the theory that underpins the isoparametric finite element method all the way up to implementation and data visualization. In this overview lecture, I want to give you a brief roadmap of the course and a sense of what to expect and when. The course is made up of nine different sections plus an optional appendix. I've added the appendix for anybody who needs a refresher on 2D stress analysis, the fundamentals of 2D stress analysis. Each section of the course is focused on a specific topic or achieving a specific goal. All of the files associated with a specific section can be downloaded from within that section. So you'll see those listed alongside all of the lectures within a section. Now your Blender files can be downloaded and opened simply by double clicking on them, provided that you have Blender installed. But remember, your Jupyter Notebooks can't just be opened by double clicking. You're going to have to open those from within your Jupyter File Explorer window. Now, if you have any trouble or any problems accessing your files or opening your files, just get in touch with me either through the lecture comments or by direct message. Each section has an overview lecture, just like this one, where I'll give you a more detailed heads up on exactly what to expect within that section. Now take your time working through these sections. The course is quite long and at times it's quite technical. So you're gonna to wanna to take your time. You might find that as you're working through a lecture, there's something you don't fully understand. Now, sometimes it can be the case that all you need to do is go on to the next lecture and that lecture will contain the missing piece of information or the missing context that you need to make sense of whatever it is you don't quite understand at this stage. So it's okay to go on to one lecture beyond or maybe two lectures beyond where you're currently struggling. But what you mustn't do is go on to a new section before you understand what's in the current section. And if you've got questions, as always, get in touch with me. I'm on hand and, and more than happy to help. So it's obviously completely up to you how you work through the course and you know do what works best for you. Now, for some people, that just involves watching the videos. They can watch the course videos and basically take everything on board. Now, for me, that doesn't personally work. I mean, having gone through plenty of video courses myself, I have to be much, much more proactive when I'm taking one of these courses. And so I'd recommend the same for you. Take a proactive approach to this course as you work through it. So that means doing things like writing your own version of the code as you see me write and explain the code. As well, get your hands on a hard copy notebook and start writing down your own version of the notes, particularly in the earlier sections of the course where we're sort of focusing in on the theory. You'll wanna be writing your own version of the notes based on what I'm writing on screen, but also adding in your own notes as you go. Now, one of the reasons why I, I don't actually provide PDFs of those early theory sections is because I want you to write your version of these notes. Now, the course is gonna take you longer to get through if you do this, but you're gonna have a better understanding by the time you get to the end of the course, if you do it. After this introductory section, we'll get straight into the theory that underpins or acts as the foundation for this whole course. Now, we'll start off by covering some topics like shape functions and the Jacobian matrix, which are probably gonna be new to you, but we're also gonna revisit some of the things that we've covered in the prerequisite course. It's just that we'll be hitting them in a new context in this course. In section three, we're gonna cover the topic of numerical integration. Now, the need to perform a numerical integration in order to calculate the element stiffness matrix, that's one of the big differences between applying the finite element method to 2D continuum elements and applying it to simple or simpler uh, linear beam and bar elements that we've covered in other degree tutors courses. So we're gonna cover how and why this numerical integration technique works before applying it to our specific problem. In section four, we'll take a break from the theory and head over to Blender, the open source 3D modeling tool. Now we're gonna use Blender to generate our structural finite element meshes within this course. And in this section, we're gonna generate a fairly basic mesh uh, and then write some code that allows us to export the, the, the data that defines that mesh so that we can then bring it over into our Jupyter Notebook. Now, later on in the course, we're going to cover alternative or different techniques for generating structural meshes or finite element meshes for more complex structures. But for now, we'll stick with a fairly simple mesh. In section five, we're gonna take everything that we've learned up until this point, and we're actually going to implement the isoparametric finite element method within our Jupyter Notebook. 
Now our analysis at this stage is going to focus on a plain stress simply supported beam. This is useful because at the end of this section we're going to be able to compare the deflections predicted by our finite element code with a, a simple Euler-Bernoulli beam deflection calculation. Section 6 is all about stress analysis and contour plots. So when we think about finite element analysis, we immediately, or certainly I immediately, think about uh, those nice colourful uh, contour plots of stress distributions. So that's what we're going to focus on in this section. We're going to calculate and then visualise the normal stress and shear stress distributions for our beam. We'll wrap this section up with another validation exercise where we compare the stress distributions coming from our finite element code again with those derived based on fundamental beam bending theory. Now if you're not familiar with the study of 2D plane stress this would be a really good time to pause, go down to the appendix and cover the material in that appendix and then come back and complete this section. In section 7 we take a really big step towards broadening the applicability of our solver by building in the ability to handle surface and body forces. What this basically does is it gives our code the ability to handle distributed loading across our structures and also self-weight. At this point our solver has all of its essential features and we can start to focus on some of the more nice to have features. So in section 8 we're going to focus on principal stresses first. So we're going to calculate the principal stresses and then visualise their magnitude and orientation across our structure. Again, if, if you're not familiar with stress analysis, go down and cover the material in the appendix before you take this section. Because in the appendix, we're going to cover principal stresses in detail, principal planes. You're going to want to be familiar with that material before working through this section. After covering principal stress, we're then going to talk about von Mises' failure criterion. And then we'll go and calculate the von Mises stress and visualize that across our structure. Up to this point, we've used a simply supported beam as the, as the test case, as the foundation against which or on which to build all of our code. Now, this has been really useful because it's allowed us to carry out a number of validation exercises along the way. But the real power, the real strength of the finite element method is its ability to easily handle complex geometries. And so if we only focus on simple rectangular beams, we never really leverage the power of the finite element method. So we're going to focus on a multi-arch viaduct type structure. In analysing this structure, we're going to be forced to stress test our code and make tweaks to our code. And once we've done this, it's going to leave you in a really good position to apply the code to more complex structures. So at this point, you'll have built for yourself a very, very capable finite element solver. In the next lecture, I'm just going to say a few words on course prerequisites, on some of the things that you should probably be familiar with before taking this course, and also some things that you might think you need to know before taking this course, but actually probably don't. So we'll uh, take a break here and pick up that discussion in the next lecture.